Welcome to Sine Waves Exercises. Recently, I did not touch my alto sax for two months or so, as I fell madly in love with my soprano, and I did not want to cheat. I thought I would ease back to alto playing with some sine wave tuning exercises that I devised some years ago. I like these sine waves as they challenge. They do not leave you anywhere to hide. I have deliberately picked large intervals, including notes, outside of the tessitura, so as to place these perhaps less comfortable tones under the microscope as well. These sine waves produce in me a feeling of well-being, mostly. I suppose it's the combination of deep breathing, slowness and concentration. Zen-like. I am encountering certain tuning challenges, as you can hear after my sabbatical. I would like to share some tuning tips I have picked up along the way that I will be ruminating on in my daily warm-up sine wave practice sessions, trying to ameliorate these problems. Here is a list in no certain order of things to consider when tuning the saxophone, and a very quick comment on each one. 1. Temperature. If it is cold, the saxophone will be flatter than usual, and if warm, like here in summer, it will be sharp. 2. Mouthpiece placement. Further in makes the tube shorter, raising the tuning, and further out flattens, lowering the tuning. 3. Throat position, open, closed or relaxed. When the throat area is tense, the tuning will tend to be sharper. Listen as I tense my throat, as if straining. Four, tongue position. E, A, R, O. Very critical this. Can you feel the different positions? E is the highest with the tongue touching the back molars. A is a bit lower. Ah, lower still, and O oh, in the basement. We are aiming for E. This is ideal. The air shoots into the instrument freely. The lower the tongue, the flatter, more unfocused the sound. In this demonstration, I start on the E position and then quickly move down to O which is quite unpleasant. Number five, airstream. I love thinking of pushing a piece of heavy furniture across the room. The airstream is like this. It needs to flow constantly. As soon as you stop pushing, you lose the inertia. The sound deteriorates along with the tuning. Number six, air direction. Aiming inside the mouth, high or lower, with your air, makes a big difference. Listen to the tuning drop as I aim the air lower inside my mouth. Number seven, biting. This is obvious, but do not bite. The reed will cease to vibrate freely, you will become tense and sharp, and probably bite even more. Number eight, face. My clarinet teacher, the great Mariano Rey of Buenos Aires, showed me this concept. He called it the clarinet face. Cara de clarinete. It's just smiling, just a bit, keeping the cheeks firm. This centers the sound and lifts the tuning a little, of course, if it is required. Number nine, reed strength. A very soft reed can be quite flat, I find. Also, it is hard to get this sound to project. Number 10, fingering. There are alternate fingerings for almost every note of the sax that you can employ that can help tune and stabilize notes. Well worth checking out, in my opinion. The next exercise, this one, I got from the great Eddie Harris. 
is just a major scale with each other note displaced an octave. So what are we listening for when tuning with sine waves? We can listen to the beats. What are beats? In acoustics, a beat is an interference pattern between two sounds of slightly different frequencies, perceived as a periodic variation in volume, whose rate is the difference of the two frequencies. When tuning instruments that can produce sustained notes, beats can be readily recognized. Let's listen for the beats now. I leave you now with an example to try in concert key that should be comfortable for the trumpet, alto sax, clarinet and a high tenor sax. Please remember to subscribe, like and share if you enjoyed the content.